Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting a demoness from Arcadia Quest Inferno. from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to the first painting video in this Arcadia Quest Inferno series. Um, just before I get into talking about the game and the demoness here that I'm going to be painting, I just wanted to quickly mention that in case you didn't see in the intro at the start of this video, I've started up a Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel. So for Facebook, it's facebook.com slash the plastic canvas. For Twitter, it's at plastic canvas underscore. And then for Instagram, it's at the plastic canvas. So I've set those up as a way of, you know, posting, um, images of projects that I'm working on at the time so that you can see what I'm doing and what videos to expect to see coming out soon. Um, but then also I sort of hope that you guys may post some images of things that you're doing on there as well. Um, just as another way of sort of, you know, staying in contact with uh, or engaging with the channel. Um, I just want to do a little shout out to Tommy, one of my subscribers, who has posted some pictures on Twitter of his Mansions of Madness miniatures um, because he used some of the videos that I did in the Mansions of Madness series as a bit of a guide for painting some of his miniatures. So um, when I looked at the pictures, I saw that um, Ghost... Um, the crawling one, um, and a couple of others, I think, maybe um, the Biaki or Mr. B, as I called him because I didn't know actually how to say his name. Um, I saw them and I thought, hey, they look kind of familiar um, because, yeah, my videos have been used as a guide, which I, I really, really like seeing. So, yeah, if there's something in some of the videos that you take away and using your own painting or if you use them as a guide, um, please do post to there um, because I would love to see them. Um, and also Tommy put a suggestion um, about putting timestamps for the videos um, just as a quick way of jumping between the different parts of the videos if there are um, bits that you want to see specifically and so I'm going to be putting them um, with each video so yeah if you do have any suggestions please do make sure you put them down um, so that I can try and improve the videos as much as possible but yeah please do go and visit those different um, um, different other platforms so Twitter um, Facebook and Instagram to um, yeah keep up to date with with the channel I'll also be posting um, links in those different things for videos as they come up um, just so yeah you don't you don't miss any but anyway so let's get into uh, this video so Arcadia Quest Inferno is a competitive dungeon crawl game where players uh, take control of a party of heroes um, and then go into a dungeon um, go up against the heroes in other players' parties and also against the, the minions in that dungeon to try and be the first to complete a um, set series of objectives. And the demoness here is one of those minions. So I've just got the card for for her here. So, um, yeah, love the artwork in this game. So you're going to be um, painting her up to, to look like that. Um, so, yeah, so I've started off with the demoness because she's for lack of a better term, kind of the one, one of the cannon fodders of the game. So she comes out a lot, and so I thought I might as well start with the ones that come onto the board the most. So, um, yeah, and, and she's sort of fairly simple, so it'll be a quick, a quick paint. Um, so, yeah, normally at this point, I'd look for, you know, mould lines to clean them up, but um, being a Seamon game, the mould lines are pretty good, um, and, yeah, um, this one here doesn't, doesn't need anything done. Um, one thing to just keep in mind if you are painting this game, there is a little bit of an inconsistency between the sculpts of one particular mini. So there's about three or four of this particular sculpt of the Demoness, and what I have found is that one of them did need the mould lines along the base to be removed, and maybe in one or two other spots, but none of the others did. So that is just a thing to keep an eye out for, just because you mightn't have had to remove any mould lines on other ones, doesn't mean that you won't find one that does. But yeah, so get to skip that step with her. So now I'm gonna get on to priming. So I'm gonna do a Zenithal Prime for her. So I'm going to start with a black prime 
on the whole mini. Um, and then I'm going to hit from a fairly high angle, um, higher than 45 degrees with grey, um, and run that around the top to get that sort of mid-level of um, light that would be hitting, um, and then finish off with white from directly above. So the light source will look like it's coming from directly above. Then I'll take some pictures of that and use that as a guide for when I'm um, getting into highlighting and shading. Now I'm going to be doing that priming outside um, because there are some serious fumes that um, come off the come off the paint. And I don't want to do that inside. I don't have anything set up for filming outside yet. So, yeah, I'm going to go out and do that. And then I'll cut back to uh, when um, when she's primed. Um, and then I'll have a quick little talk about what I'm going to do to paint her up. All right, so our demoness is primed. So you can see um, in the, where, where the deeper shadows will be. Um, it stayed black. Where that mid-range of light is, it's grey. And then from directly above, it's white. So it gives a really good indication of where those highlights and shadows are going to be. Um, so at this point some people just use really really thin down paints to let that sort of shading come through I'm not going to do that I'm just going to paint as like you know with normal consistency from here but then yeah when it comes to comes to the highlighting um, I can see where those highest um, levels of, of highlighting need to be so yeah so just going to get into um, base coating so I'll start with the skin being the lowest layer um, and then just work my way up to the to the topmost layer um, yeah using the card um, mostly for inspiration. Um, I might have a couple of little spots here and there where I sort of differ, but yeah, for the most part, um, I'll be sticking to the card. Alright, so there's been a number of ways in which my painting has evolved so far over the last um, probably nine or ten months that I've been painting for. And one way that I, I just wanted to mention that I was thinking of then is, I guess just for lack of a better way of describing it, is just not sweating over the small things. Um, so just as an example, um, just where I'm painting the first coat here, um, you know, so there's a bit of her skin um, just comes in between her boots and then, you know, sort of the part she's wearing around sort of her, her midsection there. Um, some of that red has slopped onto um, the top of her boots. Now, back when I started painting, I would have probably used, like, the smallest brush that I had, like a size zero, maybe a size two, um, to, to be doing the base coating and just making sure that, like, that line of red just met perfectly against the edge and really, really being finicky about it. Um, but there's going to be at least two coats of paint going onto her with, with the red um, going over the darker parts of the prime, possibly even three coats. It's not until that last coat that um, there needs to be that really high level of precision where one colour meets another. Now that doesn't mean that I'm just slopping it around willy-nilly, but I'm not wasting time um, trying to really meet those lines absolutely perfectly. If a bit of the red slops onto the, the boots, that's fine because I'm going to come back with a, with a dark grey to paint the boots it's just going to go over the top it's not until the final coat that I really need to worry about it and I found that I've just my painting has really really sped up because I'm now always using the biggest brush that I can um, I'm using my regiment brush here which roughly translates to about a three or a four in in number size um, and I'll probably use it for every part of the mini um, maybe not so much for the line work around like the top of her boots and whatnot, um, where that will be a different colour. Um, but yeah, just not getting caught up in those tiny details. It's, I find I found when I first started, it was really easy to get caught up in just making every little part perfect first go um, because you're holding it so close to your eyes. But just sort of keep in mind that, you know, this 
It's going to be sitting in the middle of the table. Those little details are going to get missed. But yeah, it's not until that final coat that you really need to um, be worrying about those small things. Um, and yeah, that, that's just a thing that I wanted to mention that I was just thinking about then. Um, because yeah, when I first started, I would have done everything that I could to avoid getting that red on the boots. But there's still going to be at least another two coats going over the top of it. And so getting it perfect now is just going to be a waste of time. Because if I then slot anything later on, well, it just made that pointless. So yeah, just a just a good little thing to, to keep in mind. Just don't worry, just don't sweat the small things.
um, on the end of her trident here, I'm going to do a blend from um, basically white at the tips through to this ameth amethyst purple that I'm using at the moment, um, then into um, the twilight purple, I think it is, um, down the base just to get a cool little um, blend going on there. Um, Back when I first started wet blending, like if I was doing something like this, um, just straight over the prime, I would do, try and do the blend. Um, what I found though is that if you put down like a base for it, um, the blend works a lot easier. So if you do a blend of purples over a base of purple, um, it's much, much easier to get that gradient because you've kind of got something underneath to hide the parts of the blend that don't quite work perfectly um, is sort of my theory on why it, why it works so those imperfections just kind of get covered up um, or more so um, just don't show through because you've got that the base coming through but yeah so just doing the amethyst purple as a base for the trident um, and then I'm going to come back and do that blend over the top So back at the start of the video, I mentioned um, sort of, you know, the way that my painting has evolved and one of those is just, as I've sort of put it, just not sweating the small things. Um, so just, you know, keeping in mind that if there's going to be three or four, you know, layers on a base coat, that first layer doesn't need to be absolutely precise. Well, now that I'm at the point where I've got the her skin um, that red up to a tone that I'm happy with, that primer stopped coming through. Um, now I'm going to go back and just, you know, neaten up the edges. Just little things like um, where these bones are um, as part of her, like, shoulder guard gauntlet sort of thing there. Um, just painting that red just back up in between just to sort of define, you know, just... just Little things like that, just defining those bones um, and the edges where her skin meets the, her boots and things like that. So yeah, now that I'm at the point um, where there won't be more coats for the for the actual base coat, um, yeah, just go around, neaten up those those edges because now is the is the time to do that.
in a way, I'm going to be sort of calling base coding done um, in a way because I'm going to be getting on to highlighting and shading now, but there's just a couple of little points that I haven't actually painted yet because I'll be coming back after I've done the highlighting to finish them off. So just an example of a point there is just this bit of jewellery that she's wearing um, just across the top of her forehead there. Um, because most of the highlighting on her face is going to be on her forehead, I don't want to paint that jewellery and then I need to highlight the top section of her head there and then paint and then highlight in sort of to the same um, level of contrast underneath as well. So I'm going to do that highlighting just in one go and then come back and paint that jewellery there. Um, same thing, she's wearing a pendant around her neck and if I just bring in the card you can just see from here, so there's that jewellery that she's wearing um, on the top of her head um, and then she's got like a pendant sort of thing around her neck. So in the same way that I've still got some highlighting and shading to do in there, um, I'm going to do all of that first and then come back and paint that pendant. So there's just a couple of little things like that that I still need to finish off but I um, have some um, some other things to do first. Um, another spot is in her eyes. I'm just going to use um, Caribou Crimson just to get a bit of a, a deeper shade around her eyes so that then when I paint them, um, paint the whites of her eyes white, um, they just pop a little bit more. Um, and again, in the card, it's just that there's just a bit of a deeper line around her eyes. Um, it's just to sort of recreate that. So yeah, for the, so calling base coating done now, but there are just those little things to do here and there um, that I'll come back and do later, just mainly for ease of painting. So yeah, so I'm just going to do a um, washes now in a couple of different spots. So I'll be doing a green wash over all of these these green parts, which are snakes, if you can't tell, um, just so that that'll fall into those recesses, just because the detailing detailing is quite fine there. Um, that wash will fall in there nicely. Um, and just where these bones are, like I've painted them um, skeleton bone, but I'm just going to use Seraphim Sepia over them just to give them that, um, yeah, dirtier, more worn sort of bone colour rather than that bright white. Um, and yeah, just a couple little things like that. Uh, um, blue wash over her hair so that when I then highlight, um, yeah, it brings up that contrast a little bit more. But yeah, so wash is next and then into some highlighting. Um, just while I'm putting this green wash on here, I just thought this would be just a good little time to mention um, just sort of how massively overused I think washes are. And I absolutely fell into that uh, group of just doing a base coat and then just putting a wash over everything and then sort of highlighting from there. But what I've tried to do with my last couple of minis um, is really just sort of look at what sort of a surface it is that I'm actually shading and then whether it's going to be worth doing a wash or whether it's going to be worth, whether it's going to be better to then um, just layer up the shading. And so I think if you've got larger surfaces, um, a wash actually makes it look worse because I found, and this may just be the way that I apply it, but it can end up looking a little bit sort of spotty um, and not um, sort of really consistent. Um, whereas if you sort of have a larger surface and you um, layer up with just like a, a deeper tone, so say I was going to do some shading on the red here, um, mix up a, a darker red, so it could be something like um, like Carnage Red, so I've painted this um, Magma Red, so you could then grab something like Carnage Red, which is deeper, but really, really thin it down, um, and then just apply thin layers and just build it up slowly. Um, that just gives you a much, much smoother um, consistency and more control over exactly where the shading ends up. So I think, yeah, for, for larger surfaces, um, build it up with thinner, um, thinner coats of paint but if you've got something like this where um, like her hair tie which you can now see from the the wash that's gone in there where you've got these really thin sort of recesses a wash is absolutely perfect for this because it just falls straight into there yes it darkens the whole thing but it falls right into those recesses and then when I come back and 
highlight, I'm going to highlight with the same colour that I originally painted it, which is just the pale green there. And then it's just going to be really, really easy to pick up those raised parts. So yeah, I, I was definitely one that just base coated and then washed everything. Um, but I'm absolutely trying to move away from that because like everything, there's a time and a place for it. And I think if you've got these small recesses on small surfaces, great for that. But if you've got bigger surfaces, um, yeah, I think just layering up with deeper shades with thin down paints is the way to go because it gives you a much smoother finish and um, yeah, more control over where it goes. So yeah, um, I mean, it's each to their own, but um, yeah, that's just what I'm finding is, is working best for me. example of what I was talking about before with the washes so like I said washes are great for if you've got small recesses so like in the hair tie there um, but not so great if you have broader surfaces so like in her cape there's very very minute um, you know folds and ripples in in her cape um, if I used a wash on there it would basically do nothing and could possibly go blotchy. Um, so for here, it's going to be much, much better to just um, gradually build up the shadows. Um, so what I've got is the Twilight Purple. So this is a mix of Amethyst Purple and Twilight Purple. So now I'm just using straight Twilight, which is the, the darker one, but super, super thin down. Um, so if I just paint some of my on my nail there, you can see how how thin that is. Um, so lots and lots of water in there. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm just going to gradually build up the, the shadows and then I'll come back in from the other angle and, and work in the highlights, which will be starting with the, the amethyst, which will be brighter than this because this is a mix of amethyst and twilight. And then I'll finish within, um, you know, well on the way to white for just where that high, highest level of light concentration will be. I'm just quickly still on the edges of um, where I'm shading I'm still just feathering out that edge so that I still get even though I'm using thin layers um, still getting a gradual transition so yeah just putting a, a bit of paint down in where the deepest part of the shadow will be and then I just lick the paint off the brush get the bristles wet and then just feather that edge out to nothing so that there's that gradual transition you can do the same thing just by washing the, the brush off but um, it's, yeah, it's quicker just to lick it.
so in my last order of paints that came in, um, which the video is up for the unboxing that I did when that arrived, um, one of the things that I focused on was getting um, more shades of each colour, so that when I highlight and shade I have more options, so rather than just taking, like say, the one red that I've got and then mixing white or black into light, not to darken it, I've actually got more options for just, you know, going to a deeper red or to a lighter red. Um, and then the blue here for the hair is a good example of what I was looking at. So the blue that I've always had is this one here, which is Oceanic Blue, and then in the order that I just got in, um, I picked up this Brion blue here and so you can see that it's a it's a deeper blue and the Brion blue is what I painted her hair with so now I'm going to start dry brushing some highlights on and so rather than having to lighten off the Brion blue I'm going to use the oceanic blue as the first stage of the highlights I'll check to see if maybe it's a bit too much of a jump from the Brion to the Oceanic, we'll have a look at that. Um, but yeah, so then when I've highlighted with that, then as I work my way up to getting towards the point of the hair that's getting the highest concentration of light, you know, I can then move towards light blue. And then I've got uh, like Glacier Blue and all the way up to LED Blue. Um, so yeah, that was one of the things that I looked at. So yeah, when I had a limited number of each colour, if I was shading or highlighting, it just sort of really came down to mixing in black or white to, um, yeah, to, to darken or lighten. But yeah, in that last order that I got, I got lots of deeper shades of colour. So I got a you know a couple of deep blues, some deep greens, some deep reds, um, just so that, yeah, especially when I'm shading, I've got more options. But here's a good example of where this will come in um, because, yeah, painted the hair in the dark blue, and now rather than having to lighten this off to highlight, I can just go straight to a lighter one. So that highlighting is done on her hair. Um, pretty simple effect, just dry brushing. But um, yeah, I think it's sort of with a, with a textured surf surface like this, with something like hair, um, just some simple dry brushing goes a long way to adding some some depth um, and bringing out the the forms. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Um, but once it's in the middle of the table, will that you know contrast come through and um, really sort of show the um, you know show the the form of the sculpt? Absolutely. When that's sitting in the middle of the table, um, that'll be that'll be looking good. So happy with how that's come out. Um, so I thought one thing that might be just a bit interesting is just to bring in the paper towel that I was using while. Um, dry brush in there, just what I was using to, to dry the, the brush off. Um, and as you can see, I'm trying to find a dry part of the, the paper towel. It was a little bit tricky towards the end. But just to have a look at how many different tones I've got, just in something as simple as just highlighting the hair. And I've been talking um, about a couple of different ways in the last few videos in the way that my painting has changed since I started. I've been painting for a little bit sort of under a year. Um, and 
obviously one of the things that I keep talking about is the um, how much I'm pushing the contrast now, but just also the number of tones that I'm using. So back when I started, I would have, like, Oceanic Blue was just the first blue that I had. So I would have, like, you know, done the hair in Oceanic Blue and then just lightened this right, right off and then just on one highlight um, and that would have been it. Um, just very, very simple. Whereas now, um, to get this, and, you know, you can see the different tones in there, um, obviously the, the Brion Blue was the, the base coat and then I did the... Um, Dragon Off Nightshade wash over it. Then it was a dry brush of Oceanic Blue. Then I mixed in some light blue to the Oceanic Blue, and then that was the next um, sort of layer, I suppose. Then there was just light blue. Then I mixed in some Glacier Blue. Then it was just Glacier Blue. And then I mixed in some pure white in with the glacier blue for the final um the final highlight so there was one two three four five six different tones done just in that highlighting there and that helps to give that really sort of gradual um transition so even though it's it's dry brushing it's a simple technique still want to get that gradual transition so that um yeah there's no two defined lines in the highlighting um but yeah so that's um that's how i went about that but yeah i just wanted to show that just so you can sort of see because obviously this is off camera but you can just sort of see how many different tones i was working with there um but yeah so that's that's a big way that my painting has changed um it, yeah, it's not just um using just one or two tones it's now yeah um really sort of layering up same thing when i was highlighting the the cloak there um so, yeah, pushing it right, right down to, um, to that twilight purple um, and then just building, building the tones up gradually to get a bit of contrast in there. And, yeah, happy with, happy with how that's looking. So now I'm going to get in and finish the, the rest of the highlighting. So just in terms of thicknesses of the paint, there'll be a couple of different thicknesses for this section. Um, so with the green, because I really don't want the paint to flow into those recesses or recesses at all, I really want to keep it just where I want it to go. Um, so it'll be the, uh, what is it, the pale green, which is what the, the base coat was. Um, I'll only be thinning it down just enough to get a bit of flow with it because I will be feathering it out but I'll still be keeping it pretty thick so that yeah it doesn't run anywhere that I don't want it to but then when highlighting the skin because I'm going to be um, feathering that out quite a bit um, that'll be thinned down quite a bit more same with as I start to lighten off the the dark gray of you know her um, I don't even know what the you know the midsection covering there is called um, that'll be the same sort of thing quite thin down so that I can feather that out quite a bit um, so yeah just a couple of different thicknesses there that I thought were worth mentioning um, one thing I think I can already see happening is that I'm going to be highlighting over what I did around the eyes so I'm probably going to have to go back and redo that but that's okay if I if I need to so yeah um, I'll get into highlighting the the, the rest of our demoness
just quickly as I get into highlighting the skin, I found with red in the past, um, because the, the base coat that I've done is a little bit hard to tell in the bottle, but I think the brightest red that I've already got. So in order to highlight, I now need to try and lighten this tone that I'm using. In the past, I have mixed in some white with the red to lighten it, but obviously that sort of turns it pink. Um, and But then the more and more white that gets added, the further it gets away from red. So instead of adding white, even though I've just said adding white turns it pink, I'm going to be mixing pink in with the red because obviously pink is closer to red than what white is. So it will still leave it looking red, but just a brighter red tone. Um, so yeah, it's just magma red, which is the, the base coat, and then just some, some blush pink. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how, how that looks.
quickly redo the tip of her trident um, just because I want to bring more of the white um, down a little bit further just to um, really sort of boost the contrast a bit more. So most of the tip will be white and then that sort of, um, you know, sort of the, the, the midsection will then be that um, brightish purple, the amethyst purple, um, and then just leave that deeper purple um, down the bottom. Yeah, just so that from further away that contrast comes out a lot more. That's a lot better there. I'm um, just comparing that side to that side, just bringing that white down further um, has just really boosted that contrast and yeah, much more the, the look that I'm going for. So yeah, I'll just do that to this side too. sort of the pendant necklace kind of thing that she's got. Um, just for my angle, for my painting, I will need to bring it down so you won't see it, but I'll bring it back. So all it is, is basically a triangle shape, um, yeah, pendant on the end of the necklace, and then just a couple of bands that then just run around her neck. Um, it's, it's in the sculpt. You might not be able to pick it up too well in the camera, um, but yeah, it's just, just in there. But yeah, just for my painting, it'll be out of shot, um, but then I'll bring it back in. base coating done for, well actually sorry not the base coating done, there's the mini done for our Demon S. Um, just one quick thing I wanted to point out um, and this is just for if you are going to be painting her. Um, when I did her eyebrows I followed along the eyebrows that were part of the sculpt and you won't be able to pick up I'm sure um, watching this um, but I have followed exactly along the sculpt and if you actually have a look it's not symmetrical. I didn't realise until after I'd painted that the eyebrows that had been sculpted in um, yeah, were, were slightly off and it was after I painted it that I noticed it. <clears throat> now not the end of the world, it might not bother you if it doesn't then just follow them that's probably the easiest way to do it um, but if it's if like me it's going to bother you a little bit um, probably paint that one first I reckon that one's got a better shape to it and then just try and match this one as close as you can um, but yeah anyway that's um that's just something that I noticed within the sculpt after I painted it so um yeah so going to leave her there for the actual um, mini part. Um, I mean, you know, the highlighting can keep being pushed further, but there's only so far that it needs to go. Um, so now I'm going to do the base. Now, um, the tiles in the game, um, there's two basic sort of colours within them. The rooms are like a stony sort of look, um, but then all of the kind of hallways, corridors, whatever you want to call them, um, have like a lava-ish look to them. So I'm going to do th this effect on the base. So what I'm going to do first is paint the top of the base with um, red, orange and yellow. And I'm just basically going to blob that in all over the place. I'm not going to try to blend it together or anything like that because I want a really, really high contrast. So blob red, orange and yellow together. Let that dry. And then I'm going to paint over that a ghrelin earth. And then as that dries, it shrinks and cracks. And then it'll leave big cracks all over the place where that red, orange and yellow lava effect comes through. And then where the agrellin earth is left, I'm then going to paint that black to then give the effect of like dried volcanic rock um, and then that lava sort of flowing through underneath. Um, in my head, that looks really, really good. In practice, who knows? We'll, uh, we'll find out. But yeah, so the first layer, just to paint the, the lava, 
red, orange, and yellow, no blending, just blobbing it on. Um, then when it's dry, a grill and earth, after it cracks, paint it black, um, and then our demoness will be finished. So that um, volcanic rock part of the base is done. Really happy with how that's looking. It's brought out the colors of the lava underneath, made them a lot more bold. So yeah, happy with how that's come up. So now I'm just gonna do some skulls to finish it off. Um, and I've got my um, Citadel skulls pack here that I recently got. Um, and in this is 340 skulls, all different shapes and sizes. Um, so I've just picked out three of these. Now these all just come in sprues um, in the box. So I just picked out a few of them. And what I did for ease of painting is I snipped up um, a paper clip um, and then I just super glued it onto the back of the skull, just the side that's going to get stuck down to the base just to make it easier to paint. So I've got this guy there that, um, yeah, it's a bit of a sort of beastie kind of looking skull with uh, the jawbone missing. Um, and then I've got two that are human skulls and they're a little bit smaller. And one of them's got a, a crack in it. Um, and then the other one's just a normal looking skull. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna paint these up and then I'll, I'll glue them down. So I'm just gonna do them uh, with skeleton bone and come back. Um, yes, yeah, so I paint them with skeleton bone um, and then do a seraphim sepia wash over the top as I do with all of my other um, bone finishes um, and then maybe some highlighting depending on how they come up, not really too sure. Um, I was originally going to glue them down onto the base and then paint them but after I played around with them a little bit, like I sort of put one, I think I put the bigger one just sort of out here in front of her, it was then just going to be too tricky to paint in behind on the side that the mini's on. So yeah, going about it this way. And then <laughs> one thing that's gonna be a little bit tricky is 
once they're sort of been drying, what do I do with them? Um, blue tack would probably be a great um, idea to stick them in. I don't have any blue tack, so I just went and found some bulldog clips and yeah, after I paint them, they can just sit in there and um, they'll be able to sit down and then just, and then dry and then I can glue them back down. So <clears throat> hopefully between now and the end of the video, I shouldn't need to stop to explain anything. So one thing I'll just mention now is after I've finished the base, I'll then be doing a matte varnish. Um, now I do have a spray varnish that I've gone and bought, but I'm going to do a matte varnish to finish, uh, sorry, a brush on varnish to finish it, just because where the Agrell on Earth, like, you know, that's, that's on the base there, um, it's now separate little bits of paint. Um, I don't want to sort of potentially blow any of that off, which I have heard has happened to some people when they do a spray varnish. So I'm just going to do a brush on varnish just to make sure that um, none of those fly off. But yeah, so we'll uh, get our demoness finished off. So with the base done, our demoness is finished. Um, really happy with how the base came up there. I wasn't sure if what I had in my head for the base would actually translate well, but I think that black volcanic rock has really helped the lava flowing underneath to really sort of pop, and those skulls there to sort of finish it off nicely. So um, yeah, she's she's done. So thanks very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. Um, and like I said back at the start of the video, I do have that um, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts set up now. So please do stop by and check them out, especially if there's something from one of the videos that you've used in your own painting, whether it's a technique or a colour scheme, please do drop by and put a video up because um, I, I do love seeing what you guys are doing. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, um, Tommy one of my subscribers put up some Mansions of Madness pictures and I really liked seeing the the color schemes that I'd used in my videos appearing in some of his minis so um 
yeah, please do leave a comment down below, something that you liked um, and something that you think could be improved about these videos. And yeah, hit the like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out, um, especially if you're painting Arcadia Quest Inferno. And alongside these, I'm also going to be doing Imperial Assault and some more Mansions of Mana. So yeah, um, hit the subscribe to keep up to date with them. So yeah, with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.